and Mrs. Knorr, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. This is Peters. Oh, they are. Yeah, thanks for the tip. No, I won't forget. See you up here. Oh. First the police are after me, and now my own boys. You made the policies, boss, remember? Yeah, I know, Ori, but I wouldn't testify against you even if it meant saving my own skin. Oh, wait a minute. How about one last smoke? At least you owe me that much. Hey. Cigarettes. like Kell's lighter. It's got his initials on it. Where he is, he's got all the fire he needs. Oh, so you're gonna take my place? In about 30 seconds. Well, at least I'm glad it's you, Ori. I've always been very fond of you. I want to give you something. Hey. It's brand new. Looks like I'm not gonna be wearing it anymore. Thanks, boss. We'll call it a present. <laughs> yeah, going away present. Well, that's mighty nice of you. Jerry, we're over an hour late now for this cocktail party. Shall we try for two? Oh, listen, darling, I know the nicest little place near here. <laughs> Jerry, where we the Simmons are very sweet people. And very dull. Oh, Pam, we could have more fun in a graveyard. All right. I'll bet in an hour we'll both be bored to death. Hospital. 
Sorry, he's been shot. Shot? Are you sure? Yes, yeah, she's sure. Just keep oh. driving. Oh, now look, we were trying to help you. You're but... still gonna help me. But just drive. All right. What do you want us to take you? Oh, shut up and let me think. Better drive me to Montreal. Montreal? Montreal. Now look, if you think we're going to take you all the way to Canada, you... I think you are. And drive carefully, my friend. You may save a life. Might be your own. Of course, you know who I am. And all the time, I thought I was famous. Or well, maybe you don't read the newspapers. Peters. You're Joe Peters. Aren't the police looking for Yes, they're looking for me. So are my own men. That's a lot worse. See if you can get some music on that thing. Maybe it'll make me forget this leg for a while. Not that kind of junk, I said music! Yeah, that's better. I'm searching for a girl. It's a letter. Then. a dock and there's a dock. Pull up in that lane park under those trees. Now listen to me. You go in and get the dock. Have him bring his bag and a good flashlight. Now wait. If anything goes wrong or you're not back here in five minutes, you're going to be a widower. Five minutes isn't much time. It's time enough. Smoke? Hold it. He's sure making a lot of noise, Fred. Yeah, he must be in a hurry. Everybody wants a doctor in a hurry. Don't matter if it's a new baby or a case of indigestion. They're always in a rush. That's the darnest looking trout fly I have ever seen. Looked like a cross between a royal coachman and a silver doctor. That's what it is. It's, it's my own pattern. <laughs> I, I call it the royal doctor. You don't need to knock down her door, Dr. Swanson. That's right. Come on over and see this new trout fly. I was just showing to her. No, please come quickly, doctor. This is an emergency. Well, I'll get my bag. Oh, uh, right. Where do we go? Uh, not far. A man's been shot. Uh, his uh, leg is cut. That's still a crazy looking fly. I'll bet you never do any good with it, Doc. Please hurry, Doctor. This, this is an emergency. My wife's life is depending on you. Your wife? I've I got less you, than two minutes left. But you said it was a man. Never mind what I said. Now, please hurry. I'm, I've got less than two minutes left. Mm -hmm. 
us. Now what are you looking for? Looking for my glasses. Oh, oh, oh here they are. All right, well, come on. Come on here. No, 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 wait. We're, we'll need a flashlight. A you flashlight? Got yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm All right, well, get it, get it, and please hurry. You know, you're a little upset, son. Maybe you ought to take something to quiet those nerves. Oh, never mind my nerves, Doc. Please, get that flashlight. Well, it seems right here somewhere. Think that guy loves you? He sure is taking his time. Ah! There it is. Come on. Come on. Well, these five minutes are about up. It's too bad. Such a criminal waste of beauty. Oh, oh no, please, wait a minute. Maybe the doctor wasn't home, but... Reach over and turn on some music. Loud. Go ahead. But I don't understand. If you were this close, why didn't you bring the paper? Here's the doctor. Time? All right, Mrs. North, stand out there with your husband. And stay where I can watch you. Doc! Doc, get in here with me and get to work on his leg. All it, don't try it, you'll never make it. Come on, into the front seat. Hurry up. Close the door and put your hands up on the steering wheel. Higher so I can see him. That's better, now just keep him there. Don't you worry, Doc, nobody's gonna hurt you. Where's your flashlight? Why, why this is a bullet wound. Yeah, I know, a little hunting accident. What are we gonna do, Jerry? What can we do? Just have to wait for a chance to make a break for it. Mrs. North, turn around and hold this light. <laughs> you know, my tailor'd have a stroke if he saw what you were doing to this $300 creation. <laughs> well, uh, I'll have to clean this out some. It's uh, gonna hurt, though. All right, go ahead. Now, hold that light as steady as you can. You've, uh, you've lost quite a lot of blood. Uh, that bullet has to come out. Can't that wait till later? Not if you want to keep this leg. All right, get on with it. You mean, out here? Well, you said the bullet had to come out, didn't you? Start digging it out. Are you crazy? You'd be asking for infection. At least come into the house. Come on, get started. But... <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. I don't usually lose my temper, but... Well, I guess I'm a little nervous. I know you don't like working on me here, Doc, but do the best you can. I'll appreciate it. Well, give me the light over here. What's that? I'm gonna give you a shot of Novocaine to get in the pain. Never mind that, I'll stay awake. It's only a local... I don't like needles. But the pain... I can take it. Only one thing, Doc. Just don't make it so bad that I faint. Because if I start to pass out, I'm gonna pull this trigger. If you have a bullet you don't need for murder, you better chew on it. Take it easy, darling. It'll be over in a few minutes. Keep your hands on the wheel. Sorry, Doc. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Harry. You 
evening, Matt. How's the police business? Same as always on this beat. Dull. Yeah, nothing ever seems to happen around here. Except to Fred. He had an emergency a little while ago. Who was it? Don't know, stranger. Stranger? Fred don't get many strangers. This one was real hurried. So excited he couldn't seem to remember if his wife or some man wanted Doc. It's his wife then, I know. I was the same when Betty's time came. Oh, I was making so much fuss, they weren't sure whether she was having the baby or I was. <laughs> Give you credit, mister. By now, I'd have been letting out yells they could have heard clear over in Tallman Park. <sighs> ah, I'll have it out in a minute. <clears throat> it's about time, Doc. Out. See? All right, so it's out. Stop patting yourself on the back. What are you looking at? It's a cop. Douse that light. All right, you two. Start necking. Get on, Doc. Take a look. What's the matter? What do you think kids pooning would keep their feet off the brake pedal? I better chase them on. All right, boy blue, just keep walking. Walk yourself right into your coffin. Jerry, you'll kill him. I've got to warn him. No, that's suicide. Got to take the chance. Be ready to duck. Hey, Max, why don't you give the kids a break? Well, it's against my principles, but maybe just this once. I'll give them until I come around again. All right, you two, knock off the romance. Get the hands back on the wheel. Doc, wrap it up quick. Mrs. North, pull the light for him. That bullet came out of a pistol. No one hunts with a pistol. You do if you're hunting men. I'll have to report this to the police, you know. Oh, sure you will. I wouldn't want you breaking the law, Doc. Finish fixing the leg. Oh, I can fix your leg. But I can't cure what's really wrong with you. Yeah? What's that? You're sick inside. The way a mad dog is sick. You're quite the philosopher, aren't you, Doc? You can't work, or love, or fight, or even relax. All right, get this crate moving. Because uh, the world is afraid of men who kill. You're alone, waiting to be destroyed. Just like a mad dog. Did you hear what I said, North? You are a mad dog, Mr. Peters. So you read the papers, too? Well, you did a good job anyway, Doctor. Makes me feel like enjoying some music. Turn it up, will you, Mrs. North? Louder, please. Oh, no! No! Stop the car. Peters. Yeah? You forgot to thank him. Yeah, so I did. Well, I won't forget to tell you. Mrs. North, get back here in the back seat with me like you were before. Come on, hurry. Hurry up.
right, get going. back down to 60 miles an hour. It's better. We might attract a speed cop, and that would only get somebody hurt. Hurt like... like that poor doctor? Still thinking about him, huh? Forgive me, but I'm not quite used to murder. Murder? That's a nasty word. Let's call it an unfortunate necessity. He's going to tell the police about me, so he had to die. Very unfortunate for the doctor, but that's the way the ball bounces. Have you no feelings at all? Feelings? Oh, yes. About music, books, a whole lot of things. But not about people. That's the secret of my success. Success? Exactly. I have over a half a million dollars. That makes me a success in anybody's book, I believe. Not in mine. How about friends? Who needs them? You see, that's a difference between you and me. I don't need anybody. <laughs> Just this. You and your little gun. You make a happy couple. You're going to kill us like you did the doctor when we've served our purpose. After you've been so helpful? <laughs> How can you think of such a thing? Well, it's easy. I've seen your gratitude. Well, we've got a long trip ahead of us before any decision has to be made, so uh, let's all settle back and enjoy it, huh? What's the matter? I feel sick. Could we stop just a minute? No, no. You'll be all right. Please, Jerry, just a minute. I said we're not going to stop. Just keep moving. You can write your own ticket. Where do you want it? Stop! Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Oh, my eyes! Uh, you must be in pain. Oh. You want me to help? Oh, no, don't hit me. You can't hit a blind man. Hey, help me, somebody. Help me. My eyes are killed. Peters, can you hear me? Stop crying. Oh, I can't see. Nobody's going to touch you. Could it make us sick? Oh, my eyes. Oh, thank you, dear. What's bothering you now, Donnie? Peters is in jail and we're home safe and sound. Hmm? Oh, well, that's not it, Jerry. Hmm? What is it, then? I was just wishing we'd stopped at an all-night delicatessen to pick up some dill pickles and some strawberries. <laughs> Stra strawberries. <laughs> at this time of night? Mm hmm Oh, Pam, darling. Oh, here, here, here. Just sit down. Now, just take it easy. I'll, I'll run out and get your pill pickles and strawberries, and, and, and I'll be right back. Now, you just relax. Oh, Jerry! No. No? No. I wanted the dill pickle for your sandwich and the strawberries for our breakfast tomorrow morning. You're not... Uh, we're not... Well, not that I know of. It's a very nice idea.
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Paul Landers. Produced by John W. Loveton. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales.